So I missed a couple things on the last video, and I just wanted to cover those things. Let's hop over to Twitter. Remember I said that, note, pointed out that in 2013, she said she had a meet and greet in Rosedale, and I said that Rosedale was important. So this is where we're going to hop over. Um, this is actually the election map over here. Down by the airport, you have Laurelton and Rosedale. So Rosedale is where that fundraiser was. Laurelton is where Cherie lives. It's in Queens, basically. But that's Queens. And up here, if you can see where my cursor is, where it says Horace Harding Expressway, Long Island Expressway, that is the line between AOC's district and the next district over, which also isn't Cherie's district. Like the middle of Queens is Meng's district. And then this section of Queens is AOC's district. And then there's actually a little sliver over here that is Carolyn Maloney's district. Her district spreads over the a little bit of the Upper East Side on, in Manhattan and Queens, which is like right here, if you can see where my cursor is circling. All right. Now, this is where I just was on the other map. I was like roughly right over here. I was, that that's Carolyn Maloney's district. Now, like I said, this is AOC's district. And then you see where it turns, I was saying the expressway where it turns from medium blue to light blue with some pink patches. So the light blue with the pink patches, that's Meng's district. That went 65% for Hillary Hildeman in 2016, whereas AOC's district went 75% for Hildeman. So um, Meng's district is a whole 10% closer. Anyway, so that, all of that, that is very, very dark blue. And that is AOC sister. You see how dark, and then I'm hovering these 90, 95, 91, 92, 93. I mean, these are very, very high percentages for Hillary. And in AOC's district, there's not a single solitary Trump mini district. There's also not a single solitary Trump mini district on all of Manhattan. Where the districts went for Trump were where you have houses, homes that people own in semi-suburban areas. They're still more clustered than a regular suburban area, but you know, you have like attached townhouses and stuff where people own the homes. Those areas generally are the ones where you have these percentages for Trump. Like this whole area, this is all houses. These are actually detached homes. This area is a mix of homes and um and apartments and it's also co apartments that people own not apartments that you rent so that makes a difference um i'm actually surprised that this area isn't more these areas could be more republican i think i think if we went and explained the ideology to people we could we could pull this area further republican and I also want to show you, you see, look, did you even know, I didn't know this, that we have an entire uh, borough, which is Staten Island, the entire borough of Staten Island, the, this tip went blue, but you see all of this, those are owned homes in that area, and it went Republican, that's a heavily Republican, the, all of Staten Island, plus like the edge of Brooklyn, is all one congressional district so like over here so you see like even though it's blue it's it's light blue and you see a lot of pink patches in that 
that the con the congressional seat just flipped. So everyone keeps saying like they want to they really want to flip AOC seat where it's not going to happen. But this district that was Republican in 2016 as a congressional district went for Trump. The you know, even in the mayoral election in 2017, Staten Island went 67% for the Republican candidate for mayor. So all of that, and then they were able to flip it in 2018. They, one of the things they do is they also overperform. So I think people in the area need to get on this. This is also Joey Salads is one of the two candidates who's running for to be the Republican to represent this district. And then the other is Nicole Malliotakis. So they will duke it out in a primary and then whichever wins will go against most likely Max Rose, who is the incumbent. And he's a Democrat and he sold himself as some sort of like moderate. And then what happened is, and he's Jewish too. He made those comments. It was in, what's his name? The leader of the the uh, Get Ilhan Omar out of the Foreign Affairs Committee, the leader of that whole movement that spoke at my Republican club, he said in the speech at the club that when he spoke, because he lives in Max Rose's district, he lives in that lower nub of Brooklyn that's included with Staten Island for the congressional seat. So he, Max Rose, he spoke to Max Rose about you know, well, why don't you advocate for her to be removed from the Foreign Affairs uh, Committee? And he said, well, she's my friend. I can't advocate against her. She's my friend. So this is what we're up against. We're up against people who voted for this person who claimed he was a moderate Democrat, but turned around and is supporting someone so extreme to consider themselves friends with someone so extreme as Ilhan Omar. Anyway, I think I'm rambling on a bit, um, but that's all the stuff I wanted to show you. I'll link all this stuff in the description. So if you want to crawl down this rabbit hole on your own, you can. And if not, you can see what I've already shown you. All right, thanks for stopping by my channel. I'll see you all next time. To be aware, we need to stand up against the sun. Oh, well, people need to be awake. People need to be awake, and they need to be aware, and they need to stand up against the sun. Oh, well, and, it, and it's so politically engaged. And, and it's so politically engaged.